We are so pleased to have Leslie Cutler back with another Mindful Moments segment. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you, Julie. Great, great to have to, you back. Thank you, and it's wonderful to be here. And thank today you. you've selected the um, subject of mindfulness. Yes. So what exactly is mindfulness? Well, that's a great question. I think it's something that's frequently misunderstood. So it's really about paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, um, in the moment, non-judgmentally. It's a daily ritual that when done regularly can be the ultimate challenge, but it's a different way of living, of seeing, of being with ourselves. So it's being aware of what's happening in the present moment, not wishing for that to change, and also being able to enjoy each pleasant experience and remain in it, not trying to hold on to it, as well as the negative, believing that yes, you can experience something negative, but you're not stuck in it forever. So it started as this buzz in Silicon Valley, yeah. and you know everybody kind of thought it would be something that would quickly pass, but it really is something that's here to stay. And um, you know, most of us think of mindfulness practice within the context of meditation, but this right. is not necessarily so. Right, right. So when you said um, the most important thing is to be in the moment, um, it's so hard for most people to not just be looking forward. What do I have to do next? I have yes. to pick up the kids. I have to do this. Oh. I have to go to work. Um, so how does how do I use mindfulness in my life? Or how do, you, how do you speak to people? How do they use it in your life? Right, and that's a really good point. And you know, everybody has excuses as to why that they can't do, oh, I've got ADHD, my right. life is like in triage mode, you know, and I, I can be present in some way and I can be aware, is that the same as mindfulness? But it's very important to note that mindfulness and awareness are two different things. Okay. So I know that I'm here speaking with you in this moment, but it's not, the same as being mindful as to how I'm speaking with you. Okay. So it's a different level of it. And you know, it's interesting because mindfulness has been shown to really help a lot of health conditions as well, specifically anxiety and depression. See what happens when we're in this state of stress all the time, right. we become hyper aware yes. all the time. We're simply reacting to whatever's getting thrown at us and everything is kind of on hyper alert. We are not meant to live this way. Okay. And I I know a lot of us do, and I'm guilty of it as well. Right. I mean, I think we all have moments like this. But what mindfulness allows us to do is to go back and kind of self-regulate our emotions a little bit, to be aware and to maybe stop some of these unhealthy patterns that are continuing. Okay, so you have five ways of incorporating it into our daily lives. Yes. And number one is practice mindfulness in the mundane. What does that mean? Well, I think this is really probably a great starting place for a lot of people. You know, like we were saying, life is stressful and, you know, we have these massive to-do lists every day, but maybe just stepping back and trying to find gentle ways of connecting with those that we love. You know, maybe perhaps, um, you know, a, a, a looking for a way that we might help another person mm -hmm. or practice love and kindness in a way that might be beneficial to all. You know, most of us travel through life in autopilot and really don't get a chance to make some of those changes that we want to do. Could it be as simple as just getting in the habit of waving someone in front of you yes. when you're at a four-way stop? Yes. I mean, that, that's the kind of thing. It's just the mundane. Yes. It's something that you just, like you said, it's a habit. You have to practice it and do it. You just have to practice it and do okay. it. Okay. You're going to do number two. Number two is practice not living in the future or in the present. Which and, is and, what we were talking about. And right. it's exactly what we're talking about. And, and, you know, where we all struggle, there's a reason why the past is history. And not that we can't take those lessons from the past and incorporate them into our daily lives. But when we find ourselves slipping back there and getting stuck, that's when we need to bring ourselves back to the moment. And also, in retrospect, it's great to have goals to be thinking about the future, what we want to do, how we want to be, how we hope to, you know, grow and that sort of thing. And that's crucial too. But again, remaining in the present, not getting caught up about what's in front of us or stuck in what's behind us. Right. So remaining in the present. And that's got to be a really hard thing to train your, your head and your heart and your mind to do. Yes. It's, got, it's hard, right? It, it is. And again, it's a it's challenge. Habit. This is something you have to practice constantly. You're very, very right. Okay, yeah. so number three, <laughs> practice. Yes. <laughs> Sitting with the feeling. What does that mean? Practice <laughs> sitting with the feeling. Well, you know, this is something I work with my clients with on a regular basis because, you know, it's so intolerable to sit with our feelings at times. You know, and mindfulness isn't about, you know, kind of being happy-go-lucky and, you know, Susie Sunshine all the time, but it's really about learning to sit with what is. Holding complex feelings, not trying to change them, but just learning to be at peace and, and, and to sit with them. 
And I know that that's incredibly, incredibly difficult. And again, a lot of this, you know, sounds simple in the way that we're talking about it, but when it comes to practicing it in our lives, it is quite challenging. Can you give me an example of sitting with your feelings? You know, I see this a lot in grief work. I don't oh. think that our society gives a lot of space to grieving because mm -hmm. it's intolerable. We all know that at some point in our lives it's going to come up. Right. So being able to sit with a friend who's crying and wailing and, and being able to tolerate that level and emotion in them as well as ourselves in our own grieving. Okay, that makes sense. So number four, you had practice mindful listening, and again, That's something we hard. all <laughs> struggle with. Because I'm thinking of the next thing I'm going to say. I'm not listening yeah, to you. And I'm building my argument. Yes, I'm and, building my case. Yes, and you know we all do this, but again, another act of love and kindness is to really pay deep attention. And this is where you can practice it in your job, in that home, really truly listening to what a person's saying. You know, not trying to counteract them, not judging them in your mind, but not just listening, but truly hearing them. And in doing this, they'll appreciate it. Right. It's an act of kindness. And then hopefully in return, they'll do the same for you as well. Now, do you clarify and confirm what they said to you? Is, is that an important part of listening? Because you can nod your head right. and say, oh, I hear you. But do you, is, is it a good idea to get into the habit of to feed it back to them? If I heard you, you're saying this, that is, is that right? You're so right with that. Okay. And you know, I do a lot of that in, in couples counseling too. That works very well within the context of relationships because sure. we all want to be heard and understood right. truly at the end of the day. And so by coming back and sort of reframing it for them is crucial. Okay. And your last uh, thing is to practice self-observation. Right. Ooh. <laughs> and again, this is a challenge as well, but really just kind of, you know, noticing, oh my goodness, I'm not being mindful in this moment, which means you really are being mindful. You're bringing yourself back. It's a way of stepping back from your thoughts, being a conscious observer, seeing them and be able to notice them, perhaps noticing the place where the thoughts are repetitive or compulsive in a way, as a way of finding a new way of being with them and perhaps doing them in a different way. Mm -hmm. And these are all ways that mindfulness can, can assist us. So it's like if you do something or you react to something, it's saying, okay, I didn't handle that well, or I don't like how I did that, or I could yes. have done that differently? Yes. Is that, is that part exactly of it? That's exactly it. And that, as well as compulsive thoughts, too. Geez, I keep finding myself reviewing this again and again and again. But this is something I can't change, and then kind of incorporating in what you said, right. but going forward, I can look at this in a different way. Right. And so it really does help break some of these destructive patterns right. that we all find ourselves stuck in from time to time. It's almost framing your thoughts. Exactly. Being in charge of framing your thoughts. Yes. Okay. Mindfulness. Mindfulness. Another wonderful segment that'll that will help us, but again, something we have to practice. Something we have to practice okay, every we day. We thank Leslie Cutler so much for being with us today. We'll see you next time. Thank you.